Hello, Stam Campers. Hope you're doing well today. Another gloomy gray day out there, but hey, it's a good time to stamp. Okay, the first card that, or one of the cards that we made at my most recent stamp camp with this card right here. Holy smokes, it's your birthday. To put this one together, <clears throat> it's pretty easy. Um, it does have kind of like a little a suspension card-like thing where you have that blank space in the middle there. But to make it <clears throat> in your packet, you'll receive these pieces. Should have two pieces of this Argyle paper, the designer series paper. It actually comes from the golfing one. And then you'll have a piece of uh, <clears throat> blue or navy blue cardstock. And also I've already die cut out a white uh, rectangle for you, stitched rectangle. And we have another piece of blue and then of course the inside piece. First thing you'll need to do is find your base and it happens to be this one here where I've already cut off some of it. And you'll want to take your designer series paper and go ahead and uh, put that on top of it. And then find the other piece that's pretty much the same size, this smaller chunk of the uh, Knight of Navy. And just to make sure, put it down here to be sure it's the right one. And then of course attach that. And then you have that part done. You've already done the stamping for this and uh, you have your grill and everything hopefully attached to that. And you have your little flame stamped up above your grill. <clears throat> and then of course your little holy smokes, it's your birthday tag already finished. Then you'll just mount that on that larger Knight of Navy piece like so. And what I would do is I would just put adhesive on the top of this layer right here. And then I would go ahead and attach it, try to center it from top to bottom. This piece, of course, isn't attached yet. And it will only be attached once you uh, get that layer on there. So I would just set it on there for now. Attach the top of this and then sneak some tape behind um, this layer on the back. And then make sure this is lined up with the bottom of your card so it fits in your envelope. And then go ahead and just push that down. And that should be good. And this, of course, was for your inside message. And you had happy birthday and then a flame down there. And you'll just put that on the inside, centering from left to right and top to bottom. So that one should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you hadn't actually uh, colored your grill while you were here, I just used the light smoky slate blend. And then I just went over the um, shaded areas already with it again, so it was a little bit darker. And then I used... A uh, little light crumb cake for the like the wooden slats at the top to hold things. So that should be all you need to know for that card. Let's move on to the next one. Let's see. The next one was using a brand new stamp set, a sunflower set, celebrating sunflowers. I think is what it's called. But this uh, card actually says, "Let's celebrate you." And I've just used one of the new colors, Misty Moonlight, on here. I didn't get the pad until my paper pumpkin came this month, and it's a tiny little spot, but it seems to be holding out pretty well. I used the die cuts from that same set to uh, cut out a vellum sunflower. And let's see, the inside is just a white piece, and I turned this one into an anniversary card, and of course stamped a little bit of that sunflower right on the corner. This one should be fairly easy to figure out. Let me find the supplies you received. They're right here. You would just go ahead and fold your cardstock in half like normal. It should be scored for you. Then you would have taken the stamp while you were here and stamped, randomly stamped the uh, sunflower image around the outside edges. I tried to leave the center a little bit more clear, but Sometimes it turns out better than other times, but it should be pretty d well done. And then I actually put dimensionals on the back here to help pop it up off the card base. It's a little bit smaller. It's like four by five and a quarter. So I popped that up. Then I took my sunflower die cut and then went ahead and attached that right in the middle. And I just put some glue right around the center of the sunflower. And then I, I uh, stamped Let's Celebrate You on here. And then I popped that up with dimensionals right in the center there. And then I just added some of the rhinestones. You should have a little package of this 
um, are like this. It has some red ribbon, some white twine, baker's twine. It has some uh, rhinestones and then some black sparkly ribbon in there. That's your accessories you'll need. And for this one, you're going to need three of the um, gemstones or the three of the rhinestones. I just put one here, one there, one there. Or you can put them anywhere you'd like. And then your other piece in your little packet was this one for the center message, the inside message. And that would be this right here. Okay. And you wouldn't have to put happy anniversary. You could put happy birthday or happy at uh, graduation or whatever you prefer in there. So that's all for that one. Let me see here. Let me get all these pieces back in so the next person will be able to put their card together. That would help. Okay, the next card is this one right here. Actually, you'd like to see the card first, probably, <laughs> is this one here. Um, cute little perfume bottles. Kind of reminds me of my favorite perfume, the uh, Vera Wang Princess perfume, the purples. And this one is probably going to be a little more tricky. It's not hard. It's just a little tricky. Uh, the outside is pretty similar to the grill one where, where you have empty space in between. The inside is a little more interesting. Uh, I decided that it looked kind of bare with just the backs of the front pieces. So I went ahead and um, stamped some things for the inside too. Just kind of repeated them from the outside. And since it's light enough, and we were using Highland Heather on Purple Posy cardstock. Um, it shows up well enough. And so to put this one together, there were a lot of pieces. And if you couldn't find them all in your envelope, just shake them out because there's a lot of pieces in there. First thing I would do is take my card base. I would fold it at the score line. <clears throat> and then you're gonna take this larger piece of Highland Heather and you would just center that on there. Um, it should line up top to bottom, and then you'll have like an eighth of an inch on either side of it. And the same with the designer series paper. This comes from that uh, best dressed designer series paper that goes with that set of best dressed. You can attach all that. And then the other piece that goes over here are just these three pieces. And I would just attach the Highland Heather to the Purple Posy, again centering it, and the same with the Designer Series paper. Line up top to the bottom and center. And remember, if it doesn't exactly match up, um, especially if it goes a little bit long, you could trim that with your scissors too. Okay. So then, those can be set aside. We use the Stamparatus and use these blanks to uh, stamp our Four perfume bottles with the uh, the tuxedo black memento ink. Stamp that, and then we used the um, Highland Heather ink and stamped it off once, and then did kind of the little scribble things from the stamp set inside each of the bottle to make it look like there's purple perfume in there for all four bottles. And then we have this little tag, which also comes in that die cut set, and we just stamped Hello Fabulous on both of them so we could sandwich them. Okay, and then to put it together, uh, the first thing I did was after I had these attached, then I lined lined this layer, it would be attached, they would be attached to each other, but lined it up with the edge of the card. And same with these, these would be attached. I just don't wanna do it because this would be wrecking someone's packet. Then I took my little perfume bottles and I put a glue dot um, on, diag on diagonal from each other. So I put a glue dot here and then on this corner. And then my first bottle just went like this. So just this corner and this corner actually attached these two pieces together. And then I did the same thing with the bottle at the bottom, except I put them on the other, the opposite diagonal. So this time they went on the lower left corner and the upper right corner. And then the bottle was gonna go this way. I tried to keep them kind of close to the edges here because I wanted to make sure I had enough room for my tag in the middle. I did have to kind of tuck my tag under a little bit. I put glue dots on either side of my tag just to make sure I bridge that gap between these two layers of cardstock. Once I had that all together and it was all straight, 
then I could flip the card to the inside and go ahead and I just taped these right to that. So that would kind of give it more stability and plus it made it look more cute on the inside. Then I went ahead and I took my little pieces of baker's twine out of my little packet. Let me scooch this out of the way. And in there you should have a group of four pieces. They're all the same length. I think they're all about nine inches. I just put it into two, uh, a group of two. And then I just actually snuck it in between and around the bottle just like I'm tying it to the bottle itself and just tied it right onto the bottle, which made it a lot easier. And of course, if you don't really want to uh, go through all the work of tying it around the bottle, you could just make yourself a little bow. I use those two bunny ears, cross them over, um, take the one, flip it through, and then just make myself a nice little bow. And then I could use a glue dot to attach it. But I think it looks kind of cool when you uh, actually wrap it around the back of the bottle too. But you could make your choices there. So I think that should help you with that card. The main thing, of course, is just to remember you get this little piece that's by itself first lined up with the back of the base of the card so that it definitely fits into your into your envelope when you're all done on the envelope oh this is the one that hasn't been done yet i was like oh no i didn't do the envelope that's kind of weird i usually do the envelopes let me get this tucked back into this bag here or someone will cry when they get it and they can't make it oh i guess i just put that little flower just like i did on the inside of the card Okay, moving on to the next one. Let's see. Oh, here's one we definitely need this time of the year, a graduation card. Uh, as you remember, we did the congrats using our stamp a jig Not a stamp a jig stamp -aratus, excuse me. <laughs> we could have used a stamp a jig but a stamp -aratus, and we just kept clicking down to a new level each time to do the congrats. So they're nicely lined up, which turned out nice. And on the inside, we just had good luck. And then we used a stamp from another stamp set to actually make um, another graduation hat on the inside. This is from the, oh, the Whimsy set. I can't remember its name right offhand, but it's going to retire also. And to make this card, <clears throat> here's what you received. And again, you have to kind of dump your things out sometimes because I sneak a lot of stuff in there. Um, just have a regular card base. Should be scored for you. Just fold it in half. On the front, you're going to put your black layer. And you're just going to cover up the entire front of your piece of cardstock. Normally, I would probably have done this with black card base, but I was running low on black cardstock, believe it or not. Hmm, I wonder if I know someone who could help me uh, get more black cardstock. <laughs> so once I've done that, then I'm going to take my little strips of silver. And again, they're pretty tiny strips, but uh, it's the end of a catalog. I sometimes get low on all my supplies. I just barely had enough to get silver for everyone. So I would just tape those down, um, leaving like an eighth of an inch on either side. Then you'll have this layer that you have stamped. And you're going to just go ahead and put that down. Again, the silver might be a little long, but you could cut it if you needed to. Cut on the edges. Well, I'm doing a very good job of this here, but without gluing them down. But then you'll have the front done, or that part done. You've already stamped this. And then we just use one of the starburst punches to make it a little bit bigger. And then you're gonna use the little ribbon that's in your little baby of goodies. And I just kind of separated them a little bit. And then I taped them on the back of the medallion like thing. And then kind of just did the, did the little angle cuts on it and popped that up on the front. Colored the hat with a dark gray blend marker. And then I just put a little tiny um, rhinestone right in the middle just to add a little bit of bling to it. And plus it kind of complements the ribbon that already has some bling to it. That one should be pretty easy. 
Let me sneak these pieces back where they belong so I don't lose them. Okay. Okay, next we have this card, Pedal to the Metal. And I actually use one of our dies that has been around for a while that goes with the car set, some gears. Just cut that out using the silver paper. And this one also has a fun fold. I didn't realize until I was all done prepping that I did a lot of fun folds this time. Uh, for this one, I'll show you how to put it together. We'll look at the pieces here. This one, of course, has the regular fold in the middle. But then we also have that other Z fold. So we're gonna, this is the front where you'll actually see the score line. So then this time I'm gonna fold it back towards me here. So now the card would be like this. This white piece, large white piece can get mounted onto this red piece. It has the tiniest of a border on there like a sixteenth of an inch on all the sides. So just mount that on there and that can, well actually before, before you did that, we had to do the stamping and we stamped what I call dirt or dust. We did that with sponge and then we used real red um, ink in order to do our words, which turned out kind of nice because I always get very dusty anytime I'm on the four wheeler. Now this isn't a four wheeler, but I've been told it's like a UTV or something. So or somebody says it calls it a side-by-side -side or whatever you happen to call it. It looks like it'd be fun to ride. And so anyways, that'll go on the inside here. We had already stamped our little tire treads and of course did a little more sponging over here since it's sometimes kind of a messy, messy fun pastime. And then we have some layers here. We just put the red layer on top of the basic gray and then we have a white layer which we stamped our little tire treads across the bottom and then we colored this with our blends. I used mm, mostly light real red, some dark real red for um, some areas I thought would be in the shadow and then for the inside of the tires uh, for the rims here I used a dark um, dark basic gray I believe, or no, dark smoky slate, excuse me. And then for the tires, I actually used the light black because I wanted to make sure I could still see the details to the tires. And then I just used a little bit of yellow for the, thought would be lights. And for the seats, I think I went with a dark crumb cake to kind of make them stand out a little bit from the rest of it. So that's what I did for the coloring. And before I did that though, before I attached this to the card, I decided where I wanted my gears. They don't look too bad from the back either, they're just white. Um, but I couldn't make a ton of them show because it would go off my card. But once I decided where I was gonna have that, I kind of eyed up where they were gonna fall on my card. And I still wanted um, the square layer to be fairly centered here. So I centered top to bottom. Not so much left to right because I do have a whole set of gears to go on there. Okay. And when I attached it, I actually made this become one unit and then I used adhesive just on the edge over here. Because I don't want to put adhesive over here because if I do that, they will not be able to open my card and that wouldn't be any fun. So make sure you only put adhesive on this side. And so then this would go down like so. So that's the end of that one. That was probably the most time consuming one because you had to do all that coloring. Okay, the next one, the last one is this one here, another set that's retiring. And um, for this one, it's a pretty easy one to put together. Again, a lot of pieces in there. Regular card, base again. Should be scored for you already. Now, sometimes when you look at it and you say, oh, it doesn't match perfectly. Well, sometimes that happens. Then I usually make the part that I can see where it's short or whatever. I make that be the back. So then you look at this side. Oh, you can't tell that they don't match perfectly like you did on this side. So that's the front of my card. 
And again, I was short on regular black cardstock, but I did find this in my stash. And uh, this is just some, uh, oh, some black shiny paper, glimmer paper, I guess we call it. And that just gets centered on the front. We stamped um, the little piano keyboard across this piece, which wasn't that hard, it worked out well. That'll just get mounted flat onto this layer. We just stamped the um, piano on here. And then we decided what we wanted for words. You're the music in my heart, or I think another one um, oh, was a thank you thing. So we did that. We just cut this tag right in half. So I just snipped it right down the middle. And then I put the adhesive on the back of this and then just made a little bit of a peek out on the top. And then the other half, I made it peek out at the bottom just to kind of set it off a little bit from the rest of the card. And then to put it together, we use the ribbon from our little baggie. Let's see if I can get it out of here. There it is. And I gave you plenty. Um, it kind of goes across four times. So you have like a loop and a tail on all the sides. And the easiest I found is to put some tape on the back of my tag and then just start um, going across and adhering it as I go. So then it'd be something like this. And then when I get it to how I like it, I probably tweak it a little bit more yet. That's pretty good though. And then I would put a little bit more adhesive on the back just to hold it in place. And then I use dimensionals to just pop it up on the card. And then of course, cut them diagonally the edges. And then with the tag, I just pop some dimensionals on the back, pop that up in the front of the card. Inside of the card, should have already stamped some decorations and here's the envelope. So I hope this uh, video has helped you a little bit and uh, have fun putting those cards together. And thank you very much for coming. I appreciate all of you taking time out of your day to come and, and stamp. We'll talk to you later. Bye.